feature I really wanted to show you. This is the underground heat store. I think the diagram explains it fairly well and you saw the picture inside of how it was constructed. It's just basically a liner, a butyl or I'm not quite sure, vinyl or butyl liner uh, against the earth. The earth then becomes part of the installation of this. Water put in at uh, room temperature, quickly absorbing the temperature of the ground and then we feed heat in through heat exchangers and pipes from the solar panels over there. Heat comes under the car park and then through heat exchangers the heat is given up into the body of water here and it starts to stratify the warmer water being at the top of course, the cooler water at the bottom and then that warmer water can be taken off to give some low level background heating. It's not enough to heat the building what it does is take the chill off the cold air as it comes into the building um, so that we use less direct heating then from the biomass boilers um, in the winter months. So this is intended to get up to a temperature of around about 50 degrees or so um, in maximum heat gain in the summer and then slowly to come back down to 20 degrees or so as we take small amounts of heat out of it steadily through the winter. So it's a way of accumulating heat and then giving it up again. Um, nice idea. Um, it's been used in a number of places, as the uh, text says here, it's been used in Scandinavia in areas where they have a lot of heat generation from the wood and paper industry, have to do something with all the surplus. They can burn that and produce the heat, but because it's a 24 hour, 365 day a year process, uh, inevitably they're generating heat, um, as we are, at times and they don't want to use it directly, so they use these sorts of concepts and then take the heat out into areas of uh, housing communities and the like. So it's a nice concept. It's not a very good realisation here. We knew we were going to pay a, a penalty for this. We've got this long distance between the point of generation and the point of use, well, the point of storage and the point of use. So it's a sort of triangular circuit, if you like, which is not ideal, but nonetheless uh, it allows us to try the concept and see how well it can work and we reckon we're getting something like a 50% efficiency which to me is surprisingly good given what we're up against of the heat generated in the collectors um, and then the heat actually used gainfully in the building so you, you get the concept the heat generated in July and August can then be used to cut down the uh, heating costs in the winter months by bringing up the air temperature and cutting down on the direct fuel use that we have to employ. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Miss Kansas you can see is, is growing quite nicely. No prizes for guessing where we put out the uh, runoff from the cooling water. The irrigation rather conveniently is just directly up in line with me. You follow the green stripe up along the top of the um, heat store pathway. You can see a, a taller stand of Miss Kansas there. That's where we're running out the uh, water from the uh, cooling. And although we've been told we don't need irrigation for the crop, and we actually had a very wet growing season last year, it's surprising just how much extra growth that additional runoff gives it. So whether it's because it's warm water or, or what, I don't know. But um, that's the sort of level you should be getting on this campus. We're doing a lot better than we were before, but that's probably about three metres. We're getting more like about two at the moment on the average crop. So we'll see what the yield is when we come to harvest it very shortly. I'm going to say one thing um, that adds on the extra and everything else. These, and I, I'm saying this on behalf of my colleague Deborah Perl, Perlman, Debbie Perlman, remember that another thing that you need to do is what we sometimes call environmental interpretation. And people don't know what's going on if you don't tell them. And therefore, if you go round the university site, you will see one or two environmental interpretation boards and all round here there are these boards and 
in, in your future work and lives, just remember that it's not always enough just to do things. You sometimes have to tell people and, and have something visual. Um, so a very good example of environmental interpretation. And then of course the fact that it's all part of an energy trail is also very useful. So the whole site is coherently together and people can learn from it. And thank you very, very much for a uh, very, very interesting morning. As I say, I hope we didn't ask too many questions. Well, I, but we did have I lots. For it. I, did, I, I encourage questions. So I <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank That's you very brilliant. Much.